fingers, the first finger, and the second finger. And to do trills that um, eventually can have speeds. What I used to do is practice very slowly, and we can take a look at um, a closer look at this exercise. Starting out very slowly, alternating fingers, noticing the difference between the sound when you play it soft or play it hard or use your nails. Now keep it as even as possible and gradually speed up. It's always a good idea to practice with a metronome. Get that solid click going and eventually speed it up. Notice the tone difference. Closer to the bridge, tighter. Closer to the neck. Okay, so, so far so good. That's basically pretty easy. And uh, fingers are very important in uh, tone placement. Uh, wherever you put your fingers, that's gonna have a lot to do with the tone of the note. And this is a very important um, thing depending on what music you're playing. So for instance, if you want a fatter tone, you would play closer to the neck of the bass, and it would sound bigger. Now, as you get closer to the bridge, the tone gets thinner and more percussive. So you can hear it changes. So if you were playing jazz, for instance, a walking bass line, you would play closer to the neck. And then if you were playing a more percussive kind of a sound, you'd play closer to the bridge. Then there's an, yet another dimension to the tone that you can get. And that's by using a little bit of your fingernail as, as a pick. So there's the sound of your, just your finger, but then there's the sound of your fingernail. And uh, we use this on records often to, where we want the bass to sound sort of like a guitar where it can be. gives you sort of a pick effect with your fingers. Now there's a cross string groove that we can do that it's sort of like target practice where you're playing and jumping a string, playing the octaves for instance. Now what that does is just helps your accuracy and we can take a closer look at that. It's always good to start slowly and increase your speed. Now that was fun, wasn't it? And uh, another exercise that you can practice that would uh, make use of that is... First of all, we would start at the first fret, and since I have a five string, we'll start on the B string with the note C. And what we're gonna do is alternate fingerings. We're gonna go across the neck of the bass, starting with the first two fingers. And then the first and third fingers. And then 
and fingers one and four. Then we'll change to fingers two and three. And two and four. And then fingers three and four, which are the most difficult, as you will find out. So the exercise sounds like this, and we should all do it together at first slowly and increase the speed. Stretch those fingers out. Okay, Jane Fonda would be proud of you. Now we're gonna do it a little faster. Those fingers three and four really start to get a workout after a while. And then, of course, we'll practice it faster each day. It's a good idea to practice with a metronome because it helps keep your time together. So if you uh, happen to have a metronome, start with a slow tempo and always increase. It's very important that in all of these exercises that you learn to play them well and accurately at a slower tempo and then speed up. And pretty soon we want to play them. I can't even play it. <laughs> and so on. Another good exercise for the left hand technique, and of course shake your hands out in between if they get tired, uh, is to start with the A flat note on the G string. And this is another combination of fingers exercises that stays on the same string. So as you can see, it starts and goes up the neck. So we'll take a closer look at the combination of fingers. And of course, with this exercise, as all of them, we want to start out slowly and then speed it up. OK, those are chromatic studies. And we may be throwing a lot of new terms at you that you're not familiar with, but they are covered in the booklet section of the video. So all of these exercises you can find in the booklet, and they'll have fingerings and uh, the music, and it'll help you get through them. Now let's take a look at an arpeggio study. This one is, um, we'll do a diminished arpeggio. And all an arpeggio is is a chord. It's a single note of a chord. So if you had the C major chord, you would just do the, C, the single notes of the chords, which are. So in this example, we'll start on the C and do the C diminished arpeggio going down. And it sounds like this. and so on. So we'll take a closer look at this exercise because I'd like you to learn how to play this evenly and get through all of the notes. So let's take a look at this one.